Hello, this is Nathan Fullerton. Today we're going to be talking about anonymizing a source using a mosaic filter in Final Cut. This is the standard journalistic technique that you've probably seen a lot on TV news. The source sits there sort of in a darkened room and they put big square pixels over the source's face in order to conceal their identity. Uh, and those pixels kind of move around as the, as the source's face moves around. This has been requested a lot by people I know and it's always pretty popular. Um, I am particularly fond of it because it uses a lot of cool features within Final Cut and has some really great educational value. So let's take a look at that. First and foremost, we're going to be using some generators when we do this technique. Uh, in particular, we're going to be generating an oval, which will become a traveling mat. I'll we'll talk about that more in a second. We're also going to talk a little bit about linked selections, uh, in this case, non-linked selections. Uh, we get to use clip compositing modes on the timeline and we'll get to use a traveling mat. Uh, traveling mats are particularly cool when used in conjunction with the clip compositing modes. A travel mat lets you move the effect around the screen and have it affect only certain portions of the screen and you can even animate that effect. And we'll look at that. We'll also look at keyframing in the canvas window. And in order to do the mosaic effect, uh, we're actually going to be downloading a free third-party plugin. Normally I'm not big on doing things that are non-standard, but this particular set of plugins is darn useful. So I think everyone should have it and download it, and we're going to talk about how to download it. So with that said, let's take a look at that. What we need to do, first things first, is download the TMTS plugins for Final Cut Pro. TMTS stands for Too Much Too Soon. I don't know why. Um, in order to find it, all you have to do is do a Google search for TMTS Final Cut Pro. It'll probably be the first result on the Google results. Um, if by some chance you don't find it or you just want to be sure that you're getting it from the right place, um, I've got the URL up here on the screen, uh, www.matthias.nu slash plugins. And special thanks to him for making these freely available. They're darn useful. Uh, so let's go ahead and download and install those plugins, shall we? Okay, I'm going to go to Safari here quick and just do a Search for TMTS Plugins Final Cut Pro. And look at that. Too much, too soon, free plugins for Final Cut Pro and Final Cut Express right there at the top of the list. Click on it. And we get this page right here. Put in your email address, friendlymactrainer at gmail.com, and download now. And in a moment or two, we get a disk image, yay, there it goes. Okay, we do have to actually install these things. We kind of have to do it the old fashioned way. These are freebies. They don't just get put in the right place for us. But that's okay, because it's not too terribly hard and it gives us another opportunity to learn something. These plugins go in a particular folder on your computer and that folder is on the root level of your startup drive. So you just go over there in the finder on the left and uh, click on whatever your startup drive is. Maybe it's called Macintosh HD. Uh, in my case, on mine, it is called Samsonite. So I'm going to click on Samsonite there. And then we go to Library, Application Support, Final Cut Pro System Support, or Final Cut Pro dot 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 M support. Then we go to Plugins, and in that TMTS free folder that appeared a moment ago, we just drag that TMTS free folder right into that plugins folder. Now in my case, I've already got them there, but all you have to do is drag it in here, drop it in. Once you've done that, go ahead and clean up some of the windows if you're so inclined. I'm just gonna close these babies down with the keyboard shortcut, Command W, and then launch Final Cut. If you already had Final Cut running, you should quit it and relaunch it. Uh, Final Cut scans for plugins when it first starts up. So adding those plugins after the fact, they won't be recognized and Final Cut won't see them yet. So be sure and quit Final Cut and relaunch it if you already had it running. Okay, so now I've got the TMTS plugins installed, so we're ready to start taking a look at our footage. You can see in my Final Cut project here, I have a, uh, a project called Agents Provocateurs, and I've got anonymous source number three in my browser. Let me double click that, open it up in the viewer. And you can see there's a vaguely shady looking fellow sitting there in a chair about to confess some misdeeds to us. Now, if you think about this, you know, uh, my face is in the dark there, but 
anybody with half a clue and a, and a standard installation of Final Cut can raise the brightness on that and see my face. So we need to make sure that this poor source is more anonymous than he currently is. I've already got some in and out points set on this. Let's watch this quick just to see what we're dealing with. Yeah, the governor hired me to go out and find some troublemakers to bring into the crowd. Okay, so you can see why this man would want to remain anonymous. The full weight of the governor's office coming down on his head if he's found out. So, uh, what we can do here, uh, we'll get this down on the timeline, just like we would any normal clip. Uh, we get the classic response there for best performance, your sequence, and should be set to the same format as your clips. In this case, I'm going to say yes to that, because that is a good format. I'm using ProRes uh, 422LT for this particular clip. So I say yes to that, and it pops in on the timeline. Okay, the first bit's done. We got it on the timeline. So now, what we need to do is get another copy of this. We're going to be applying that mosaic filter to another copy of this clip that sits above this one in the timeline. So when we do that normally, when we select the clip, if we were to just make a copy of this by, say, Option Drag, and then release the Option key, and then drop it in place, we get a copy of the audio too. We don't really want the audio for this one. We just want the video. So I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to make sure that nothing is selected. So I'm going to click in an empty spot. Then I'm going to come over here. And these little buttons over in a standard Final Cut installation, um, one of these little guys is the Linked Selection button. And it's usually on, but if we give that a click, we can turn it off. And now, if I go grab this particular video clip, look at that. It only selected the video portion of the clip, which is all I really want. So I'm going to do this again, and I'll go into more detail this time. I'm going to hold down Option. Then I'm going to click and hold down on that clip. Start moving it upwards. And note as I do that, the cursor is the cursor for an insert edit, not an overwrite edit. It's because I've still got the option key held down. As soon as I let up on the option key, voila, that cursor becomes an overwrite edit, which is what I want. I just want it up on track V2, which will appear as if by magic when you drop the clip into that empty space. So now I've got that clip in the timeline. Now's when I want to go in and put the mosaic filter on there. So I'm going to go up to my effects tab, I'm going to go to video filters, scroll down a bit, i got a lot of filters installed. And somewhere in there, there we go, I've got the TMTS filters. And the mosaic one is inside the TMTS stylize folder. So under TMTS stylize, we click the disclosure triangle there, and it reveals to us the different stylize filters, and there's mosaic. So I'm going to grab mosaic and drop it on to my clip on V2. Drop it on there. And if you check out the canvas, right off the bat, we can see we've got the mosaic uh, effect in full force on my entire clip. I'm not sure I like the settings there. I'm going to double click that clip, open it up in the viewer, and then go to the filters tab in the viewer. And you see that size adjustment for the mosaic filter there? I'm going to turn that down just a little. I don't want it quite that mosaic. I want to still be able to see the guy a little. So let's see. There we go. That's pretty good. So mine is set to 16. I like that. 